The history of America is the story of the people united. United behind principles that transcend the worst of humanity's past to bring freedom, prosperity, and hope to our future. These courageous ideals continue to be victorious as brave men and women have fought to make them real for all. Though there are still some battles to be waged, we cannot forsake any of the ground that we have gained to apathy or bitter partisanship. So when we vote this November 4th, regardless if we are Republicans, Democrats, Independents, or something else, we must remember to vote first as Americans. To help inform you of your choices this election day, we present to you several of the Republican candidates running in Brooklyn. These individuals represent nothing less than a deep and genuine commitment to reform, supporting our families at home, promoting greater freedom abroad, and making Brooklyn a better and more affordable place for everyone. So Brooklyn, without further ado, let's meet our Republican candidates. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, I'm born in Park Slope. I went to high school at Samuel J. Tilden, which is in my district. I went to Kingsborough Community College. Now own my own business for the last six years, which I've been a Republican all my life. It wasn't too long ago that I myself got involved in politics as a former New York City police officer, a business owner. Uh, I didn't get involved until 10, 11 years ago. And a guy like myself, um, the oldest of eight children, born of immigrant parents, uh, never thought that the parents didn't think, nor did he, that he would be in the city council or in the state senate. I manage a small family business in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, called Barry Tye. My name is Yvette Velasquez Bennett. Um, I grew up in the projects in Manhattan. Uh, I moved here when I got married 32 years ago. I have two children. I am a homeschool mom, uh, which makes me a rare bird here in Brooklyn. I spent some time in Bedford-Stuyvesant on the community board. I spent about 18 years on the community board. I, I cheered the community board to turn. Because for a long time, I worked right across the street at Brooklyn Borough Hall for Brooklyn's top Democrat, Marty Malkowitz, including, in addition, working for Brooklyn's highest Republican elected official, Congressman Vito Fasella, as his director of Brooklyn Operations. Grew up in Staten Island. My dad was a, a worked in the post office at Grand Central. My mom was a school teacher in Staten Island. I had served 24 years in the New York State Assembly. I had been the Republican floor leader. I had been responsible for the debate. I sat in Teddy Roosevelt's seat. I joined the Republican Party is because I really believe in taking responsibility and not really blaming somebody else for what's going on, but looking at yourself and what, what, what can you do to make a difference. And that's one of the reasons I, I, I was offered and uh, the opportunity to run, and I decided to run. I'm in this race because I care about my city, I love my city, and I care what's happening in our communities. It's important that we have people in elected office who will be accountable to the voters, who do feel passionate about the issues that affect us, from jobs to housing to education. These are strong issues, and we need people with strong points of view. We're the party that really stands for something. We stand for the lower taxes that I just spoke of and a strong national defense and giving Americans the tools they need to help themselves. New York City is in big, big trouble. I cannot emphasize that enough. We are going to lose 30,000 financial sector jobs this year. And we need people who understand that who aren't going to try and tax ourselves out of every single fiscal crisis that New York State or New York City gets itself into. It has to change. Raising taxes will be an economic disaster. People are leaving this area in droves because of the high taxes they're being forced to pay, because of the waste of spending that is going on in Albany. Our tax burden has been so high, and in my mind, the number one priority for New York State is indeed reducing our tax burden. Barack Obama, change, change, change. That's all you're going to have left in your pockets is change. Because once he taxes us to death, and he will tax us to death, that's all we'll have jingling in our pockets. I find it's a civil rights issue. And I explain, there's an achievement gap right now. 
that's going on between the kids who can't afford private school and the kids that are in public school. That's a horrible, ever-widening gap. We need to provide a greater choice of charter schools, of vouchers, and educational tax credits for private and home schools that would make a significant difference for our children in New York City and especially here. In the Parents need to have a choice whether or not they should, with their tax money, with the tax vouchers, if they're going to send their kids to a private school, a religious school, or if they want like to go to the public school. That should be the choice of the parent. Not the I am a supporter of more educational choices. I'm a supporter of education tax credits. There should be resources that come from the state that help parents, regardless if they want to put their kids in public, parochial, or private schools. As a Republican, a conservative, an independent, people should have a choice where they want to send their children. It is our tax dollars that are being spent. We're able to talk to other people and sit down and have a real conversation about what the issues really are. You have an opportunity for people to vote for the person and not for the party. And I think that's the biggest change we can make. I believe that we can make a difference. And the difference is uh, in changing the conversation of politics and not making the conversation about politics but about working together and about service. We can't finish what's going on at the World Trade Center. Is that not an embarrassment? That makes me mad. The fact that on the 10th anniversary, we're still probably not gonna have that memorial bill, to me, is unacceptable. But nobody wants to take responsibility for that. It's about time we change that. My opponent's earmarks came out. He spends over $4 million in earmarks. A lot of money. The more I scrutinized our elected officials in Albany, the more I realized that our legislators' votes and their rhetoric just didn't reflect our views. Decisions are going to be made in Albany in the upcoming sessions that will require a moral compass that is currently lacking. I'm not about power and influence. I'm about being a servant. I talk about new vision. I don't want to talk about change. I'm talking about new vision. What needs to happen in Albany is that we need to link together as <clears throat> colleagues coming from Brooklyn because many of our problems in our neighborhoods are the same regardless of the color of the neighborhood. They are the same. Healthcare is a terribly important issue and topic. I'm for a free market program that is affordable, accessible, A1, and not a program of government ration, European style. I stand for energy independence with American resources, including offshore exploration, including drilling in Anwar, and I have traveled twice to Prudhoe Bay. I've seen the caribou herds rubbing their backs against the pipeline. They like it. It's not an endanger to the environment. We have a set of candidates here that are uniquely qualified to take these positions on. I'm talking um, to people, I'm saying, yeah, I'm going to run for assembly. My name is Alan Ballone, and I'm a Republican. And they're like, oh, I'm a Republican. I'm like, you're a Republican. As I'm going through the county, and I'm going as the district, I'm walking around talking to people. They're all telling me they're Republican. There's so much rhetoric. Like, this election season about change, and yes we can. Well, I'm telling you, something funny is happening in Brooklyn. Change is coming. It may be coming a little slowly, but there's definitely a renaissance for our party here in Brooklyn. Make sure that everyone comes out to vote on November 4th. We need to make sure that we get as many people out there to cast votes for these candidates so that we can bring some victories back and we can ensure that Senator McCain becomes the next president of this great United States. So thank you.